Hello friends, this is Sigla Yield. Back after, it's been a long time since I did one of these tutorials, but here I am, back again, to teach you some things about making clothing in Blender and Daz Studio. I will try to put in a bookmark so that those of you who already have a finished wavefront to import to Daz Studio with vertex groups and everything can just skip that part, but some people need it, so it will be here. Here we go! Someone on the forum the other day mentioned that they couldn't find any instructions that didn't just say use DeForce or Rig with Transfer Utility, so I want to give you some more options. And we're going to start in Blender with this undetailed nude figure. Hopefully that doesn't cause problems with YouTube, but this isn't a monetized video anyway, so hopefully it won't be a problem. I have screencast keys enabled so that you can see what I'm doing. I'll try to talk to you about what I'm doing as I go as well. Now, my other tutorials have dwelt largely on strip modeling as a method because it's a method that I like, and that's what I'm going to start with today. So I'm going, I went to add at the top left and mesh and plane. Now I'm going to left click to select that plane and hit S to scale it up a little bit and then RX to rotate on the x-axis and 90. You can, when, once you've hit R for rotate and an axis, you can then also enter a number. So I'm going to drag that up here, drag it forward. Now I'm going to change the origin up here under object, set origin and origin to 3D cursor because the 3D cursor by default is at the very center of the scene. And the reason that I do this is so that I can mirror model my dress or go garment as I work on it. And I'm going to hit mirror here over on the right in the modifier properties panel, which looks like a little wrench. And but you can see that by default, it's set to the X axis and I'm going to set the merge limit to 0 0.01. So now you can see I have, surprise, two squares here instead of one. And I'll just drag that over to the middle until it merges. And I'll also go to Object and Shade Smooth. So the other thing that I'm going to do here to make this faster and easier is I'm going to go up to the top and hit this little magnet, which is a snap tool. And the square next to it creates a drop down, or excuse me, shows you a drop down whereon you can choose Project Individual Elements, which is checked by default here, and you can click Face to make sure it snaps to the closest face. And there we are. So now if I hit the G key for Grab, it snaps this right to the character in Blender. All right. And if I grab it and drag it downwards on the Z axis, it continues to follow the topology of Genesis 8 Female. So. I'm going to select an edge there by right clicking on and holding shift and clicking another vertex. And I'm just going to hit E and drag it out and hit E and drag it out. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around the character's body. Very quick, very simple. Until it merges at the center back again. There we go. And I can hit SX and 0.01 to make sure that that is a straight line there, all right? And then when I hit Alt and right click, it will allow me to select an entire row of vertices here. I don't necessarily want it to keep snapping the whole way, so I'm not actually going to do that. I hit A to deselect everything. On the very newest version of Blender, I think it may have reset the controls, so you have to hit um, A twice. But in this case, in, in 2.82 where I am now, it is just A once. And now I'm repeating that same extrusion down the body, creating this simple strip, just like this. And I'm going to do the same at the top in order to create a strap that goes over the shoulder, just like that. Just extruding. And I'm just going to carry that all the way down here, hitting S and scaling a little bit to make it the right diameter. 
then I'm going to hold down shift and click all four of these vertices and hit F to form a face that connects between them. Now I've got the basic top of my dress and I can extrude around the side here to create the rest of this. I'm trying to make the same number of vertices at top and bottom here for ease of filling in these faces when I'm done. See me using SX.1 there again. And I can select these four vertices and hit F and then Control R. You can see shows a little preview line there and I can type, I'm going to type 3 and it just splits into three little bands there. Those are places where it's going to create face subdivisions and I can left click and hit G and now it's subdivided and snapped again. Okay. And in the front, I'll just continue the thing that I've created over to the side again to meet at the center. SX.1, once again. And in this case, I'll probably select these vertices in the center here and extrude them over to the middle. And then I will select two vertices above that and hit F to create a line, and below that and hit F to create a line. And then I will select my empty square and hit F to make it a full square. And again, hit my empty square up here and hit F to make a polygon. And that's a way that you can go along and fill in these vertices, fill in these faces in the gaps that we left as we just keep going along our model. And then I can adjust position here so that these faces line up. This gives me a pretty solid control over my polygon flow. And then I'm just hitting vertices and hitting F again to just real quick fill this in. This is why I start with a very low polygon count for my very basic early stages of my strip model because if I had to do this for a large number of vertices, that would be an unacceptable time and commitment. So this is going to be pretty fast, pretty easy. And I can hit Z to make sure I don't have any faces inside the model or where they shouldn't be, things like that. I can even hit Tab to go to Object Mode and then hit Shift H to hide everything except my proto tank top in progress here. and just continue what I've been doing and hit control R to subdivide faces where I need to to make sure that everything lines up and we have nice rows of polygons. And I can do that with both sets of faces that I've created here. I'm going over the breast area as you can see here so when I make her appear again I'm going to need to adjust this because it's going to clip. I'll hit tab to go back to object mode and alt H. There's Genesis 8 female and it's clipping quite badly. So I'm just going to select these faces here and hit G. And since I have snap on it will pull them back out. Okay. Now I'm going to alt right click to select that middle line and I'm going to turn off snapping, which you can also use shift tab to do that. I'm going to hit SX and .001 to make sure I have a very straight line there for correct merging in the center. And I can even hit Z and zoom in here by using my mouse scroll wheel and drag this with G and X to make sure that it lines up as close to that middle line as possible. And the same in the back here. S, X, point zero zero one. Zoom in, hit Z, and drag to the right. I'm going pretty fast because I don't want the tutorial to be really, really long, and hopefully you can pause and go back over things on the video if you need to. Okay. I'm going to also move these a little bit, these vertices where the straps are, to de-squareify the strap line, 
Just make that a little smoother looking. And then I'm going to go to my modifier panel here, to the drop down and hit apply. Now I have this very basic, very clippy garment and I'm going to hit Alt F, Alt S to scale it outwards. And when that's not enough, I can also hit, I can also hit Alt S on individual areas or subdivide and then G and Z or G and any other axis to drag them around and declip them from the figure. We're going to use Blender's cloth simulation to get a good drape, but we need to get a good non-clipping mesh to start with before we attempt to do that. Another thing I can do here, since this is a symmetrical mesh, is I can go over here to the right to the active tool and workspace settings. It's a little symbol that looks like a screwdriver and a wrench to options, and I can click topology mirror and mirror on X. And now when I move something over here, I think I'm going to need to unclick topology mirror actually, just mirror on X and it will move the symmetrical vertices on the other side. The mesh has to be very symmetrical for this to work. It is very finicky about the topology. But if you have a very symmetrical mesh because you made it with the mirror modifier, then this can be a good time saver. Okay, I'm just going to keep declipping things here. All right. I do want this to be relatively snug fitting. But I also am going to hit, let's see, over here on the left side of my screen, you can see there's an option that says smooth. I'm going to click on that. This little yellow handle appears, and I'll left click the yellow handle and drag it a little bit to smooth my mesh out a little bit. And then I'm just going to alt right click this one line of vertices around the breast area and this other line of vertices around the breast area. And I'm just going to keep tweaking things outward a little bit here. I know that's a tedious thing to watch, but a lot of making clothing will be a bit tedious. That's somewhat the hazard of the territory. It just comes with the job. There we go. All right, now I have this simple top thing here and I'll go down to the hip area here and right alt right click to select this row of verts. Hit E to extrude and G and Z and oh, something's not right there. I have to go back over here and turn off mirror for it to extrude properly. I don't know why. And I can also hit alt R to subdivide again as I extrude. I'm going to want to go to the back here, turn the mirror back on. I'm going to be turning the mirror on and off a lot. And I'll go up here to the top bar and hit proportional editing, this little round circle. And that allows me to drag things out and affect nearby vertices within the radius of this circle. I don't want that on all the time, just like I don't want mirror on all the time, but it can be very useful. All right. Now I can just keep hitting E and subdividing and deleting things. Before I subdivide this, because I want this to be a front flap, this is going to be sort of a loincloth dress, I'm going to hit, sh let's see, I never actually remember how to use the shortcut for this, I'm just going to go up to the top left and hit face select by left clicking this little square up at the top left and then I'm going to hit C to get a selection circle and now when I left click and hold shift or control hold control and left click or hold nothing and left click because it will just keep selecting I'm going to select all these big long faces I've created around these edges and then I'm going to hit delete and I'm going to hit faces this time and there we go. And now I'm ready to go back to vertex mode up at the top left there and just 
subdivide this until I have a couple nice loincloth flaps, just like that. Now I'm ready to subdivide this entire thing because I need the whole thing to be pretty well subdivided before it can work with the cloth simulator. Maybe I'll tweak the geometry just a little bit here. Again, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the geometry because I know that's tedious for you to watch as you're watching this tutorial. Okay, there's that. So I might actually want it to be a little higher on the hips, so I think I'm going to delete some vertices here. These are skills that I've that I've described to you already, just using Z to change your visibility of your wireframe, hitting G and dragging things around with the mirror on. There we go. It looks a little more clothing-like and a little bit less mesh-like. Okay. Then I'm going to tab into object mode. Look at this, see what it looks like. I will just hit 1 to show my, my front view and tab back into edit mode. Hit A to select all and I'm going to go up here to edge on the left panel and subdivide. And subdivide again. Now this looks a little weirdly lumpy so I'm going to use that smooth handle that's still there to smooth it out a bit. That's, that's better. Unfortunately, sometimes smooth recreates clipping that we don't want. So we can use proportional edit and mirror again to fix that up. It also doesn't like certain types of polygon shapes. So then we have to correct shape a little bit here again. And trying to smooth the affected area sometimes makes it look better and sometimes makes it look worse. So we have to be a little cautious with that. Now I've got this very basic loincloth dress. I'm going to go to the modifier panel. All right, now I'm ready to go over to the right to the physics properties panel, which looks a bit like a ball with a atom or another ball circling it. And I'm going to choose cloth. I'm going to set the quality steps to 9. From experience I know that this will create something much too stiff by default, so I'm going to go down here to the stiffness settings and set all of those down by quite a bit. I'm going to set the tension to 5, compression to 5, shear to 3, and bending to 0.25. And I'm actually going to lower the damping down to 3 on a lot of these too and set the bending to 0.25. And then I will also go up here and left click Genesis 8 Female to select. And I've already done this off screen, but you hit the collision button here and it makes her an object with which the cloth will collide. And then I will go to the layout panel up on the top left if you're not there already. That shows you this nice timeline down at the bottom. And there's a little blue indicator here that you can drag to left or right along the timeline, which I'm going to drag back to zero, so that when I hit play, it will attempt to animate my cloth simulation. And there you can see it falling downwards. I actually ended up wanting to create a fold zone here to act as a guide, so I grabbed these two lines of verts and hit S and Y to drag them inward more because Y is this front back axis in Blender and Z is the up down axis. I also didn't like how floppy and stretchy it was making the top part of the garment so I'm going to go back and add some freeze zones here. I'm going to hit Z and I'm going to use the bounding box again to select some key areas that I want to ideally not move much in the breast area and the straps and the waist. Then I'm going to go over here to the right to this green triangle to the vertex groups and I'm going to create a vertex group called pin. We're going to be doing a lot of vertex groups here eventually but this is the first one. I hit assign. 
Now I can go back to the physics panel and in the cloth settings I can scroll down and let's see where is that there is a setting that allows me here we go let's see is it under shake here we go pin group I'm going to click under pin group and click pin the, which is the group that I created I'm also going to go to collisions and turn up the collision quality a little bit then I'm going to try and hit play again and see if I get a better result in terms of what I want this to ultimately look like. Yep, that is closer. It's not perfect, but it will certainly do for our tutorial on making our very simple loincloth dress. So I'm going to let that run for a few frames and I'm going to stop it by hitting pause. Then I'm going to finalize the sim by going to the modifier panel, little blue wrench on the far right, where it now says cloth. We didn't create a cloth modifier on purpose, but it created a cloth modifier for us when we created a cloth simulation in the physics panel. So I'm going to click on this tiny little drop down here on the right and click apply. And this is now the permanent shape of my mesh. When I get to Daz Studio, I want to use a hybrid method that I'm going to teach you where I will use transfer utility after I use figure setup tab. So everything that doesn't need to have custom bones, I'm just going to assign to the hip group. So I've got this in face select mode, you can see here, which you can click on the upper left. And then I'll hit Z for wireframe and B to create a bounding box and click and drag down until I think I've pretty much covered the hip area here. Maybe even a little less than that. If you hold down your middle mouse button and drag, you can unselect with the bounding box too. All right, I've got this all selected. I'm gonna go over here on the right to this little vertex panel that looks like a little green triangle. And up on the right, there is a little plus sign I can hit that creates a new group, just as we did for our pin, which I've deleted incidentally, which you can do with this minus sign here. And I'm going to call that hip, all lowercase. And then I will go down here and click assign on this button at the bottom of the dialog there. Then I'm going to hit H and hide that. This ensures that I don't create any accidental overlap. Now I can create new bones for my front and back loincloth flaps. I'm gonna hit Z and I'm just going to keep selecting and hitting the plus sign to create new giving my new group a name, in this case, um, front flap one, front flap 01. And I'm going to assign that. And I'm going to do that all the way down the loincloth, creating new bone groups here, vertex groups, which will become bones in figure setup tab. The great thing about the figure setup tool is that it will create bones for us from whatever we have given a vertex group to already. Now, in some cases, I actually would make many more bones than this in the front, but I'm going to be a little bit quicker for the tutorial here and just keep selecting and assigning and selecting and assigning and hiding. And so I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left. I'm going to actually, mm, I'm going to apply a little more of that to the hip so that we don't get clipping over the curvature of the backside there of the buttocks. So I'm just going to assign that to the hip up here by clicking on that and assign and then hide that. And then I'll do my back flaps. Create my back flap groups with the plus sign. And just keep assigning and hiding and assigning and hiding until it's done. This might appear to you like it's going to take a very long time in the case of something like um, one of the tentacle creatures I made that had ultimately 2,500 bones, and you would be largely correct. It can take a long time. There might be add-ons or something for Blender now that can make this process faster. I haven't found one yet. If anybody knows of one, please tell me in the comments. Okay, I don't reply to comments on YouTube a lot now, but I do occasionally glance at them to see what people say. All right, here we are. We've got our vertexes assigned to groups. I'm going to hit Control S to save my file. Actually, I'm going to go to File, Save As up here is what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to save it 
in my non-commercial folder and just call it FST tutorial G8 and save. Very important. I probably should have saved actually after we did our cloth simulation. It's good to save as often as possible. Now I am going to double check that I did an alt n here real quick just to make sure. And then we're going to do a quick UV map. So I'm going to go to UV editing up here on the top of this tab and I need to create some seams. In this case it's going to be very simple. I'm just going to create two. I'm going to go to my vertex select mode and alt right click on the one side and hit control three on my numpad and alt right click on the other side. Now I've selected these two rows. Those are where my seams are going to be here and I'm going to hit control E and then I'm going to click mark seam. And I'm going to do that same thing. Alt right click, alt right click, control E, mark seam to create seams up at the top here. This tells the UV mapper where to cut. So then I will hit U and unwrap. And over here it's created a wonky UV map. So let's change our settings a little bit. I'm going to hit unwrap and I'm going to change it. Let's see, it says conform all over here. And I can try checking and unchecking some things to see if it looks any different. If I change it to angle based, it actually looks a lot better. So we're going to go with that. You can do a lot of these same grab and slide and rotate operations in two dimensions here in the UV screen. In this case, I'm going to hit R and you can hold the control key to rotate in increments and I'll rotate it 90 degrees that way and hit S to scale it down a little bit. And there's my UV map. Very easy. And then over here on my left, I can click this little red circle for the material properties and hit new and it creates a material which I will name dress. If I want to create multiple materials, I can just hit the plus sign here to create another one. Let's say I want to create another one for the flaps, hit new again and name it flaps. And then I would go to edit mode and hit Z again so that I can use my bounding box to select all the vertices I want to be in this other material and go over here at the top right and click assign. Now I have two material groups with different things assigned to them. And now I'm ready to export for us to work in Daz Studio. So export, I'm going to use Wavefront OBJ. And in this case, I have created a folder for this. So I'm going to go to the G drive here where I know that folder is and to FST toot. And I'm going to call it SY dress test Genesis 8 female for my operator presets on export I'm going to click and I've created an operator preset here and so can you I use selection only OBJ objects and for my geometry I'm not going to change any of the transforms for my geometry I'm going to click apply modifiers write normals include UVs write materials but most especially polygroups and keep vertex order those two are very important and so you can hit the plus sign up here to create a new operator preset. And now I will hit export OBJ. There we go. Now we'll make sure that we're saved. And then we'll be ready to go to Daz Studio. All right, here we are looking at Daz Studio. I am using the dark side and city limits options here that I've customized by dragging tabs around. You can find those briefly under Window, Workspace, and Select Layout, and Window Style, and Select Style. I like city limits, I like being able to drag my tabs around, and I don't like the large text of um, the other available style besides dark side. So here I've got on the right my Figure Setup tab. If you do not have a Figure Setup tab, you can right-click in your tab area and choose Add Pane or Tab. And then it will be over here in this list and you can left click on it and it will appear. For now, I'm going to left click on the left side of this figure setup tab under geometry list. And up here under Tri-X weighted, let's see, I have the options of Tri-X weighted and parametric or legacy. Neither of those is what we'll ultimately end up with, but Tri-X is closer, so we're going to leave it on Tri-X weighted. For content type, I can actually go over here and select follower wardrobe 
and I can set it as address and that will create metadata. So then we'll go over here to the geometry list on the left and right click and choose add geometry. And now we can navigate to where we exported the OBJ file. In this case, my tutorial folder, there it is. I'll just double click on that. And then um, for my scaling preset, I am going to click on the drop down here and choose Daz Studio because that's the scale that I work to in Blender. And I'm going to click Accept. And then now you can see that I have this geometry here and I'm going to double click on it and I can see my list of groups that we created in Blender. Fantastic. So I'm going to left click that and drag it over here to the geometry none marking. And now it's created a series of bones. So as I'm foiling about with my tabs here, let's go back to figure setup. There we go. Um, I'm actually trying to widen the tab here by hovering over this divider. There we go. Now I've got my hip, which has the correct name, but not the correct label. So I'm going to change the label to hip with a capital H. That's important. Now I know that all of these bones are in kind of a vertical alignment. So I know from experience that XYZ is incorrect. So I am going to click the top one, left click, hold down shift, left click the bottom one. Now they're all selected and I'm going to right click on the order tab over here, the order column on the right and choose YZX. YZX is a vertical bone alignment, such as the bones of the spine of Genesis 8 and the neck and the head. You can find the correct alignment for different clothing items and body areas by looking at an existing clothing item or at Genesis 8. And it may take you some time to get used to that. But what we're going to do now is we are going to create a pelvic bone. So I'm going to right click on the hip and add child bone. And I'm going to call it pelvis, all lowercase. And then the correct label over here for that is pelvis with a capital P. Here we go. And I'm going to change that to YZX again. Now that I'm going to drag under the hip. I didn't actually have to do that because it was created as child bone, but we're going to be dragging a lot of things here onto the pelvis. First, I'm going to drag the front flap. Now, whatever you drag onto another bone is now a child of that bone. So uh, I want flap two to be a child of flap one and flap three to be a child of flap two, etc. So I'm just going to start dragging these onto each other. So the front flaps are in a line. Those will be in a nice line, the same one that the vertex groups were in that we created. And so then I'm also going to create the back flaps into a row by dragging four onto three, three onto two, two onto one. This is another part that can take a very long time if you're working with a lot of bones, but it's much faster than many of the alternatives. So I'm going to drag the back flap onto the pelvis. Now we've got the flaps are parented to the pelvis. The pelvis is parented to the hip. We're ready to go. So I'm going to hit apply sub D at the bottom here and create. And there is my dress. And you can see if I click that it has already assigned bones and groups. What it has not assigned as of yet is weight. So in order to do that, I need a Genesis 8 female. So I'm going to load one into my scene. This is a basic load with no morphs or anything in order to make it go faster. There we go. There's our Genesis 8 female. So the first thing that I'm going to do with my dress over here on the left is I'm going to left click on the name and hold down and delete this number on the right. There we go. Because it looks unprofessional. Then I am going to go to the joint editor tool, which is Alt Shift J or this little button that looks like a sort of pencil cross with a bone or a bandaid over a bone. I'm not sure which. Now we can see our neat rows of loincloth bones and they're kind of pointing downward oddly. So first I'm going to click right click in the 3D window and click align and align all bones. Now they're nicely aligned just like that. I'm going to double check and make sure that nothing is too big or too small because sometimes they generate really big or really small and you need to adjust them. If you do need to manually adjust a bone, you can look at it here, you can see these red arrows and the green arrows, and you can click and drag any of those arrows to move either end of the bone. 
You can also see here that the pelvis and hip bones are in a completely incorrect location compared to Genesis 8 female. So I'm going to left click on her and hold down the control key in my scene tab and left click on the dress. It's important to do the dress second. And then at the top of scene tab, I'm going to click this small button and click edit and rigging and transfer rigging figure space. Now my bones have snapped to the correct location. I, of course, I don't have enough bones, and that is a problem that we will be fixing momentarily. But first, I'm going to go to my tool settings, and I'm going to go to the geometry editor, or Alt-Shift-G, and you can see my face groups here, and that they are correct. And my surfaces are here too, and you can change names of things by double-clicking on them here if you need to. Now, before I rig from Genesis 8 Female, I'm actually going to save my dress to the library first. Because if I don't do that, my face groups will be lost and my bones will become unselectable. So first, I'm going to go to my joint editor again, Alt-Shift-J, right-click and choose Memorize, and then Memorize Figure Rigging. That ensures that my bones are properly memorized. If they're not, they will tend to behave incorrectly. I'm also going to go to the weight map editor briefly, Alt Shift W, right click and choose weight editing and fill by bone selection groups and then choose uh, weight editing again, right clicking and choose weight conversion and convert triax weight to general weight because general weights is what we want with Genesis 8. And it will tell me it's been converted, there we go. And now I'm going to go to weight editing and clear weight and clear triax weight. There we go. Now I'm ready to save, so I'm going to go to File, Save As, Support Asset, and Figure Prop Asset. And then I've created some subfolders here. I'm going to create one for People and Genesis 8 Female. And under that, Clothing. And I just created a folder called SY Tutorial Dress here to, to put my dress in. I've already saved it once and I made a mistake earlier, so that's why there's already a duff file there, but that's what I'm going to name it. And then you click Save, and it will come up with this figure prop asset dialog. And here it has filled in the correct folder, but if it hasn't, you can click the drop down and choose a directory that you've added. There's your vendor name, the product name, and the item name, which you can enter if it doesn't fill them in correctly for you. I've clicked set content type and then I went to wardrobe and dress here for the metadata. I don't think I really bother with these other categories because Daz is going to want to set them themselves, but if you're doing it for your own use, you might want to do that. I'm not going to set compatible because that will be set for us by transfer utility. I'm just going to click accept and now it's saved. And now we are ready to rig from Genesis 8 Female to the uncustom portions of our dress. So I'm going to go to the Polygon Group Editor, the Geometry Editor tool with Alt-Shift-G or by clicking on this icon like it looks like a pencil with a square on the top. Okay. Now I could select this by left-clicking and dragging around on the geometry of the dress but that would be time consuming. I'm going to instead right click and choose selection mode and marquee selection. And then I can drag a square to select the parts that I want to rig from Genesis 8 female down to the top of the flaps. And then if I need to add more, I can hit control and make another box so that it doesn't replace my previous box. There we go. And just I'll just make sure that it covers the top of the bum there in the back as well and maybe a little more in the front here. Then I will right click and here under geometry visibility I'm going to choose hide unselected polygons and it will hide my nice flaps that I already rigged and don't want to mess up here. So now I'm ready to start the transfer utility. The icon of it over here on the right looks like a little arrow pointing upward to the right it may be a different place on your interface, but that is what it looks like. I'm going to click on that. Now, here we go. I'm going to show options. For a scene item, for source, I'm going to choose Genesis 8 Female.
For target, I'm going to choose my dress. There we go. Now, don't just hit accept. We've got some stuff to do here. I'm going to go down here to where it says add smoothing modifier, and I'm going to go ahead and do that. But the other important thing here is that I need to click on the weight maps option under general options. And over here, I'm going to unclick remove unused bones. Actually, no, let's leave that checked. And I'm going to click Respect Hidden Faces on Target, that's very important, and Merge Hierarchies. Now, when I click Accept, it should add the bones of Genesis 8, but also leave our custom bones. So, let's see how we did. By clicking our Joint Editor, or Alt-Shift-J. There we go. There are my loincloth bones. There are my Genesis 8 female bones. Looks like we are good. So, now I'm going to... Go back to the Geometry Editor, or Alt-Shift-G, and Geometry Visibility, Show All Polygons. Now, if I go over here to the left, under my dress, Hip, Pelvis, you can see all my bones are there. If I hold down Shift and click to select them, and I go to Parameters, first you need to change some settings here. Um, up at the top, you can click the little button and choose your preferences, and then over here where it says Consolidate Properties, make sure that is clicked, and unclick Display Separate Items if that's checked. So there's that. Now under Transform, when I select multiple bones, it consolidates those bones, so that when I use the side to side, you can see there goes my flaps swinging back and forth. They have some crease problems, which we are going to fix, but you can see that the rest of this also moves when I move Genesis 8 female. So we've created a dress that is rigged to Genesis 8 female in the upper part, but has its own custom bones in the flap area. Now we have some issues remaining that we still need to fix before we save again, although I certainly wouldn't blame you if you wanted to save again just in case, but you need to not do that yet because we haven't fixed our groups yet. So what we're going to do is go to where we saved the dress the first time, and we're going to load it from the library while leaving this one we've been working on still in our scene. Now we have two copies, and the one we just loaded has a 2 in front of it, and I'm going to left-click and change the name of it to Old, just to avoid any confusion there. And the reason I did that is that if you click on the dress and click on your Tool Settings tab on the left, which the Tool Settings tab is another one you can create if you don't have one, by right-clicking and choosing Add Pane tab in this tab area over here. So we have a list of all of our face groups here, but if you look at the front flap, you will notice that under Count it says zero, because when we copied from Genesis 8 Female, it overwrote all of our lovely groups that we had assigned. And that can cause problems for our users, so we need to get them back, but that's okay because this thing we've labeled old has the correct face groups for those zones. I'm going to hide Genesis 8 Female here in the Scene tab by clicking on this eye icon um, just for the purpose of avoiding nudity. No real reason otherwise. And then I'm going to go to the Dress Test here and back to my Polygon Group Editor or Geometry Editor, Alt-Shift-G, and I'm going to select the upper part of the garment and right-click and choose Geometry Visibility and Hide Selected. Okay, now if I hide the old one here, you can see I've hidden much of that geometry. So I'm going to then transfer from old to the dress. And in this case, I'm going to uncheck everything except face groups. I'm going to uncheck Fit to Source Figure, uncheck Parent to Source Figure, just going to check face groups and then I'm going to click Accept in the Transfer Utility. Now, when I look at my dress in the Tool Settings again, now I have my nice flaps back. Now I have my flaps back, but when I tell the dress to conform to G8 by going to General here in Parameters and Fit to Genesis 8 Female, it looks fine now, but it won't look fine later because we may have messed up the scene identification. So let's check by going to Edit, Scene Identification, and yep, where it says Preferred Base, it now says None. And we don't want that. We want it to say Genesis 8 Female, or the dress will not conform properly when it's saved and reloaded. So we're going to go 
to the compatibility base thing here by clicking on the dot dot dot. Go down and click on Genesis 8 female and accept. And now the preferred base is Genesis 8 female and I'm going to click accept. So now it is both fitted to G8F and ready to save. And I will do that just right now. Save as support asset figure prop asset. And now I can overwrite the one we already created now that our groups are correct. Okay, I deleted the dress from the scene and reloaded it from the library, which I didn't show because of the nudity. And now you can see that it is properly fitted to Genesis 8 female. If I move her, the dress moves with her. And now we're ready to do something about our flap problem. So here on the dress, I'm going to go to the pelvis and select front flap and back flap and select and children. And now it has selected all of those child bones. And over here, I'm also going to select the geometry of them by going Alt Shift G or clicking on the geometry editor tool. And I'm going to left click and drag to draw a selection there around my flap areas. And now I can hit Alt Shift W or click on the node weight map brush up at the top. Okay, there we are. Now, if on the left, I click on general weights, it will just select the whatever's the top in the list there. So it looks like it's showing one of the flat bones, but it actually has selected all of the geometry and all of those bones. So when I smooth one, it will smooth all of them together. So I'm going to right click, choose weight editing, smooth selected. And I'm going to turn this down to a smooth factor of maybe mm, about 30%. I'm going to leave the number of iterations at about 26 and click accept. There, you can see it smoothed it almost instantly because I've only got like eight to 10 of these bones. It would take much longer if I had, say, a thousand bones, but that's a problem for those of you who rig creatures and a different tutorial for a different day. Now, with those still selected, if I click side to side, you can see your flaps swinging back and forth and now they're nice and smooth. So with that done, it's time to save the dress again File, Save As, Support Asset, Figure Prop Asset, and just double click on the one you already created and save over it. You can also save these as different versions as you go along if you want by giving them different names. I often don't do that, but it's certainly possible to do so. And now it's filled everything correctly here and I can just click Accept. And that, ladies and gentlemen, and valued others, is how we rig a dress with custom bones for Genesis 8 Female in Daz Studio. The process doesn't really differ for the males, and it doesn't really differ for most other figures, provided they are still either triax or dual quaternion weight mapping, which is what the general weight mapping in DAS Studio is. I hope this was helpful to you. Thank you for joining me for this very long and involved tutorial, and happy rendering!